Krakatoa version 2.5 allows us to create live copies of any particle system that Krakatoa supports using the PRT source object. Let's take a look at how we can use this in order to uh, operate with deformations and magma modifiers on a copy of a particle flow. In this particle flow we're going to emit uh, from a circle, we're going to display 100% so in the viewport, we'll change the number of particles to 20,000, we'll change the speed to have a variation of 100, we'll reverse the direction and we'll switch the display to circles. If we take a look at this emitter now, uh, we have a bunch of particles moving up over the first 30 frames, they've been emitted and then they continue up. Now, uh, in the past, if we wanted to apply any deformations or magma modifiers to this uh, a particle flow setup, we had to go and save these particles to a PRT file sequence first and then uh, operate on a PRT loader. And if anything had to change in the particle flow, we had to resave. Now, in Krakatoa 2.5, we can simply select this particle system and uh, from the Krakatoa menu create a PRT source object. The PRT source object is going to create a copy and I'm going to change the color of the particles to blue so we can see them in the middle of the circles. So uh, you can see that in every circle of the particle flow there is a corresponding blue particle which is the PRT source. We can now add magma modifiers to this or we can apply deformations. So for example if we switch to uh, a site viewport and create a spline that starts at the origin and then there's some curve and continues and we want to use this uh, spline on the particles to deform them we can select our PAT source and apply the path deform to it then pick the path and move the particles to the path and now we have a copy of the particle flow system that is actually following the spline this was possible before, as mentioned, but it required a saving of the particles first to a PRT uh, stream. So um, if we open now this particle flow and go and change the diameter of our particles uh, in the emitter, we'll see that the particle uh, copy, the PRT source, is reacting in real time. On top of that, we can, of course, add any magma modifiers and um, let's see what would happen if we select uh, this PRT source and just add a magma modifier to it. If we wanted to display, for example, the velocity, this wouldn't work that well because um, let's say we want to have an output which is uh, the view vector uh, this is a new feature in uh, Crypto 2.5 where I can type in a portion of the name of a channel and then the list will be filtered by it. So we want to display the viewport vector and we want to display the velocity as this vector and we'll have to divide this velocity by uh, the uh, frame rate so we can say FPS. If we display now, we'll see that the velocities are being drawn, but they're not following the direction of the spline because the velocity is taken before the deformation of the path deform. Now, if we wanted to display these velocities correctly, we'll have to select this flow and in place of the magma, we're going to use the new space magma, the world space modifier, and we're going to paste the same flow in it. And now, as you can see, the velocities are being actually displayed in the correct space as defined by the path deform because our modifier now can live above the transforms, the world space transforms and other space warps. Now let's say that we wanted to colorize these particles based uh, on uh, the length of the spline. That means the further they move along the spline, uh, uh, the farther along the gradient we want our color to go. There are multiple ways to do this, but one of those would be, for example, to create a PRT here from this spline. And on the PRT here we could calculate the color and then just sample the color from it. So. Um, we can add a regular magma modifier here 
and in the magma modifier we can say that the color output will be based on the um, um, let's say input channel uh, distance divided by the input channel here length this will give us a value between 0 and 1 along the spline and then we can create a function blend and swap the inputs and say let's go from red and let's end with yellow so if we uh, take a look at the output we have now red in the beginning and yellow in the end of course our uh, deformed particles don't know about this yet but we can go and in the same magma on top of the stack in the space magma we can add an output color and then here we can say we want to sample the nearest particle from the PRT here that we just created pick this PRT here as the source and drag a position input and you'll see that the position has been fed into the nearest particle without the conversion to world because the input is already in world space so the WSM version, the World Space Modifier version of the Magma, already knows that and doesn't include it. And uh, what we are currently outputting is the position, but we don't want the position. We actually want to add a query. And in this query, we can sh uh, tell it to use only the variable channels, find the color on the list, add the color, remove the position, and now our deformed particles in the world space modifier are reading the closest color from the nearby spline using the PRT here. We could do this uh, in a different way. Here on this list we're going to find both the hair length and the distance as uh, variable channels and we could calculate our color ourselves by taking the again uh, distance, divide this distance by the hair length taken from the nearby particle system uh, t take this division into the color and of course this will break the flow because that's not a valid output and here we can go and do exactly the same but this time we'll be using the blob which is a tree color gradient so using the tree color gradient we can get the this as the control value and this as the output and then we need just three colors and we can say for example red green and blue would be the three colors uh, and now the actual calculation of the gradient is using uh, the distance and the hair length data read from the PRT here, divided the one by the other and then using its own color calculation. Or we could output a UV channel that then uh, gradient ramp would use. But as you can see, all the changes that we're making to uh, the particle system for example, if we go and change the speed uh, divergence uh, to be getting wider over distance, then our particles are of course going to do this again and there is no need to resave to disk. And we can also steal data from world space after the transformations have been applied and after uh, world space deformations have been also applied uh, in order to produce a particle system in real time without ever saving again to disk.